Australia is filled with unique animals that cannot be found anywhere else in the world. And because of this, most of our Aussie animals are actually quite famous. But there are some animals in Australia that you may not actually know about. So let's start with camels. So when you think of camels, I'm sure the first place that comes to mind are places like the United Emirates. But in fact, there are roughly over a million camels that roam wild in the northern parts of Australia. Feral camels feed on more than 80% of available plants, causing serious impact on native vegetation. So how did this humpback of an animal come to live in the land down under? Well, you need to remember that Australia is a big country. So big that depending on the time of the year, places like Western Australia and Northern Territory can only be accessed by either plane or by traveling for days via South Australia, as the middle of Australia is vastly empty. Camels have been used by the Arabians dating back to well before the first century. They are known as hardy animals who can travel long distances. Transporting goods back and forth across Australia had proved to be quite difficult in the early days, but the introduction of camel exploration was making that more possible. The first camels were introduced in Australia back in 1838 and were brought into South Australia to assist in navigating the harsh climates and the terrain where horses could not. In the late 1890s, the gold fields were booming. The gold mines of Western Australia are typically found in the desert in a high heat and very soft sand. In order to build infrastructure like train lines, Afghan cameleers soon became a sought out business in the gold fields. Not all camels actually come from Afghanistan. Many were from Pakistan, India, Turkey, Iran, and even Egypt. But the name Afghan cameleers stuck. So much so that the major train line that travels through the middle parts of Australia today is named after the cameleers called the Garn. Unfortunately today, wild camels that roam central parts of Australia have caused damage and destruction to food resources used by Australian animals and also the Aboriginal people that live on the land. They also affect water holes and salt lakes that affects ecosystems around them with all their grazing. Camels are also known to have damaged stock fences, irrigation systems, and they've even been noticed to break dunnies in search of water. The number of feral camels are kept under control by ground and aerial culling to prevent the destruction of our environment. Australia has so many camels that we also export them back to the United Emirates and Saudi Arabia and many other countries too. Camels are still greatly used for tourism in Australia where many places like Alice Springs and Broome offer the opportunity for people to travel upon camelback. Even though the camels have great history here in Australia, what is your opinion? Do you think camels should still be allowed to live on this land, despite all the destruction that they cause? Cane toads are another pest that lives in Australia. They were introduced back in 1935 in the idea that they would control agricultural pests, but unfortunately due to their adaptive, predatory and poisonous behaviour, it's led to the decline and extinction of several species. The toxins of cane toads are strong enough to kill our native animals that normally eat other frogs. Cane toads will eat anything that fits in their mouth, even small mammals and even snakes. Australia does not have any predators or diseases that can control the cane toad and due to this they have expanded to cover more than 2,000 kilometres from when they were first released in North Queensland over 90 years ago. It is legal to kill cane toads in Australia, but they are still covered by animal welfare, so it's recommended to kill them humanely. Bagging it for four hours in a fridge and then placing it for another 16 hours in a freezer before burying it. But make sure your pets are not able to reach these poisonous toads. Rabbits, cute little bunny rabbits. Who would think that those cute animals cause so much harm to Australia? Rabbits were introduced into Australia to be hunted for sport, but quickly outbred those who hunted them. Rabbits have caused destruction to Australian ecosystems with devastating effects on our precious native flora and fauna. The rabbit proof fence, famous due to the movie with the same name, it was erected across Western Australia to keep the pests of the east out. The fence is over 3,250 kilometers in length, or 2,023 miles if you're still on the old standard. 
In most parts of Australia, it's actually illegal to keep rabbits as pets as unfortunately people cannot be trusted and they will introduce the rabbits back into the wild, which it's extremely detrimental to our country. Dingoes, are they actually Australian? Well, they have been here longer than the white man, so nah, yeah? They actually originated from Southeast Asia and were brought here roughly over 4,000 years ago. So technically they're an alien species to Australia, but because they've evolved to fit our environment, our native animals have adapted and recognized dingoes as apex predators and they do not have any exaggerated impact on our native predators. They too are now considered as native to Australia. It's kind of like an animal's version of sitting a citizen's test. These wild dogs are skilled hunters, but cats actually cause more harm to our native animals than dingoes do. Dingoes do actually play a pretty important role in keeping the population of rabbits and kangaroos down. Dingoes do actually look like a pretty cute dog, but be careful. Do not attempt to interact with wild dingoes, as people are also seen as a threat to them, and they will attack. There has been many attacks as of late on the holiday island of Fraser Island, or now known as Kagari. Dingo numbers in many parts of Australia have dwindled due to being shot by farmers due to attacking livestock or by hybridization, which is where they bred themselves out with other domestic dogs and produce mutts instead. Conservation efforts are underway to protect our Aussie icon. Dingoes also play an important role into Aboriginal culture as they play a great role in mythology, art and spiritual beliefs, symbolizing in strength and survival. Another Australian animal with a dog-like appearance is that that is sadly no more, the Tasmanian tiger. Despite the name, this animal was not actually a tiger. The thylacine was actually a marsupial who was also a carnivore. The thylacine once lived in New Guinea and even mainland Australia, but died out roughly three to 2,000 years ago, presumably due to the introduction of dingoes but in Tasmania, they survived because dingoes haven't reached there. Well, until Europeans showed up anyway. It was presumed that roughly 5,000 Tasmanian tigers lived in the wild in Tasmania at the beginning of the 19th century. They were seen as a threat as they would hunt farmers livestock and bounty hunting was introduced. Sadly, the last known Tasmanian tiger died in Hobart Zoo in 1936. And it wasn't until 50 years later that they were classified as an extinct animal. But in 1982, a park ranger who had been bird watching in the northwest of Tasmania, he had parked his cruiser at a nearby crossroads at night and slept in his car. But he woke up at 2 a.m. due to the rain, pointed his torch out at night, and he spotted a thylacine roughly six meters in front of his vehicle. For the past 40 years, rangers have searched the region but no other sightings have been made. There has been many claim sighting and blurry images, even on the mainland too, but just like Bigfoot with no hard evidence, there's no proof to say that they are still around. Efforts have been made to try and clone the Tasmanian tiger with preserved DNA, but nothing has been successful. But in the areas of the Blue Mountains in Australia, there are theories that black panthers may exist. Now, it's actually assumed back in World War II that US soldiers may have been the ones that brought black panthers to Australia, but there's no real proof. Black panthers were here and have been used in traveling circuses back in the day, and it's assumed that these circuses may have released them into the wild, and they may also have been part of the black market trade. Many people actually question if the Black Panther in Australia is even real. I can't say because I've never seen one. There have been roughly 500 reported sightings of the Black Panther in the past 20 years. One of those sightings even came from Grant Danya, an Australian TV producer. In 2002, a teenager was attacked by an animal and suffered deep lacerations, who claimed that he was attacked by a large feline animal. But unfortunately, nothing was found. New South Wales police detectives, officers of agriculture, and even firemen have reported seeing the black cats in the bush. Though there's been many photos and even video evidence of black panthers in the wild, 
Authorities have dismissed the alleged evidence as inconclusive. The mystery continues. Do you think that there's Tasmanian tigers or even black panthers roaming around the Australian bush? Will you still come to Australia? So that was some of the untold stories of Australian wildlife. I hope you come. I hope you enjoy. And I'll see you next time. Bye.